In the last video, we covered the horse's foregut. Now, we'll be moving on and looking at the horse's hindgut. The hindgut is a series of folded, tube-like structures that traverse front to back, side to side, and top to bottom a few times. The hindgut is attached at the front and back end of the section, but the intermediate sections are organized with only a few limited ligaments to help hold them in place. You may have seen horses being referred to as hindgut fermenters. So, let's take a second and break down what that really means. The hindgut is home to many different species of bugs that we refer to as microbes. You may also see them referred to as bacteria. So why are these bugs important? Horses, like all mammals, cannot produce the enzymes needed to break down fiber. Instead, the bugs in your horse's hindgut break down, also known as fermenting, the fiber for them. Think of all the fiber in the hay, grass, and or grain that your horse must eat. Your horse's ability to break down that fiber is dependent upon these bugs. Bugs break down the fiber and use it to produce other substances for the horse. In fact, these bugs produce about 75% of the calories that your horse needs every day and certain vitamins. It's also worth noting here that the breakdown process produces heat. This is why providing more hay can provide a lot of heat to keep the horse warm and is an easy way to turn up your horse's internal heating system in the winter. These bugs are yet another reason that it is important to provide your horse with a forage-based diet. Forages are generally higher in fiber than other foods and so play a very important part in keeping the bugs healthy and happy. So to summarize, the presence of the microbes and the breakdown or fermenting that they do are why horses refer are referred to as hindgut fermenters. What this means is that they have a simple stomach but a large population of bugs in their hindgut that break down, again that's also known as fermenting, the food that horses cannot digest. Now let's head back to the arena and take a look at the different structures involved in the horse's hindgut. The first part of the horse's hindgut is the cecum. The cecum is one of the most important parts of the hindgut. It is a large sac that can hold anywhere from around 33 to 68 liters. It's the main fermentation vat and houses billions of bugs or microbes that break down the fiber that your horse eats. The microbes produce compounds known as volatile fatty acids from the fiber. A horse will use these volatile fatty acids as a major source of calories. Here is a close-up look of the cecum used in our gut model. You will notice that this cecum also contains a variety of bugs ready to break down any fiber that they encounter. Many of you have probably heard about the risk of feeding too much grain to a horse or too much rapidly growing pasture, such as early spring pasture. Do you know that a large reason for, reason for this is because of the impact that the nutrients in these feeds have on the bugs in the hindgut? Many grains and rapidly growing pastures contain high levels of non-structural carbohydrates. Non-structural carbohydrates, often referred to as NSCs, are nutrients that are more rapidly digested and absorbed than fiber. Examples include simple sugars, fructans, and starch. Think of a bowl of jelly beans as an example. When a horse eats more non-structural carbohydrates than can be digested and absorbed in the small intestine, these compounds can slip through to the large intestine or hindgut. The bugs that usually break down fiber are not used to dealing with non-structural carbohydrates like sugar. Instead, different types of microbes, ones that are used to and prefer to break down non-structural carbohydrates, will start to grow and flourish. 
these microbes produce different types of compounds that make the gut environ environment more acidic. And this can increase the risk of digestive disturbances like polyp and other conditions like laminitis. The cecum is followed by the large colon, the small colon, the rectum, and last, but certainly not least, the anus. Similarly to the small intestine, these organs involve a series of tubes and are quite long and can become quite convoluted as you see in the video. I think these clips can definitely give us an appreciation for just how complicated it can be for veterinarians to perform colic surgery in the horse. The structure of the large colon can make it easy for some materials, like sand, to pool up inside of it. This can result in problems like sand colic. This is why it's important to make sure that you are not feeding the horse in a place where they would take in a large amount of sand or sandy soil, such as a sand ring. We're getting close to the end of our journey through the digestive system. The large colon is followed by the small colon. Much of the water is absorbed in the small colon, and some residual absorption of minerals also occurs. This is also where final fecal balls are formed. Monitoring your horse's poop can tell you more about their health and nutritional status than you might think. For instance, fecal balls should be moist so that they squish, yet still be dry enough to hold the shape. Diarrhea is a rush of undigested food and copious fluid, while dry, hard fecal balls indicate that dehydration or other problems. If you see lots of pieces of undigested hay in their poop, this might be a sign that the hay has high levels of indigestible fiber. Depending on the horse's situation, this may increase the risk for impaction colic. If the poop has a strong ammonia odor, then your horse might be getting more protein than they need. The rectum starts at the pelvis inlet and provides a storage and expulsion system for waste. The rectum is about one foot long and ends at the anus, a strong sphincter that controls manure ball release. Rectal palpation is a useful technique for veterinarians to assess colic, fecal balls, bladder, the reproductive organs of the mare, the base of the cecum, and parts of the colon where colic is frequently caused by impaction. The anus is a muscular closed ring that allows passage of fecal balls and gas. Checking the anal tone can be a good indicator of the horse's status. If fatigued, sick, or distressed, the anal tone may be sluggish to react, soft, or non-responsive. It's hard to believe just how long the horse's digestive system is and how amazing it is that this entire system is contained in one horse. We wanted to give you a visual of just how long the digestive system is when it's stretched out. So what we've done is pin up the digestive tract along the length of the arena. It really is amazing to think that this entire system is put together and inside of your horse and functions every day.
We also wanted to give you an idea of how the size of the horse's digestive tract compares with the size of the human's digestive tract. What we've done is used a rope to represent each of the digestive tracts. You'll see Gail first toss me the end of the human's digestive tract. We will follow this by looking at the length of the horse's digestive tract. A human's digestive tract is about 30 feet in length, which is about five times their body length. In comparison, a horse's digestive tract is about 85 feet. This is about a whopping 12 times their body length. Now that we've covered the digestive system, we'll take a look at what this means for how and what we feed our horses.